there has been so much confusion in the last 200 years about Islamic sciences and uh, non-secular sciences and so on and so forth. Imam Ghazali uh, had explained that very, very clearly before that there is no uh, division of dunya, dunya and deen or dunya and akhira uh, so, because uh, there, there are there is Ilm Mahmood and Ilm Mazmoom and Ilm Mahmood for the end, for the end like Kalima and Salah are for the end and then the third fard is to be able to make a living to support one's seven one, one's family before one learns about about psalm, about fasting and about hajj and zakah and so on and so forth. So that division actually is, is an outcome of our being enslaved by the Europeans for the last 200 years. So uh, not only that Quran and Majid asked this question, are those who know equal to those who do not know? Surah Zumur and uh, Ayah 39, uh, uh, Surah 39 and Ayah 11 probably. Hal is the Virizna Yalamun and Virizna Yalamun and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself saying that you should gain knowledge from the cradle to the, to the grave and go to China. I mean there was no Darul Loom in China at that time. Uh, so so in, in this regard we must understand that all knowledge is important. In Mahmood whatever can benefit human beings is, is and, and that that lay the groundwork for continuous uh, advancement of human knowledge. So Karen Armstrong and in, in her book Islam A Short History, all of us must must study that book. Uh, she says that between 9th and 11th centuries of AD, the language of knowledge in the whole world was Arabic. Anybody from any corner of the world who needed to learn something had to come to the educational institutions of the Muslim Muslim world, Muslim world at that time. Jami Azhar was started, uh, I think, in the 10th century, 10th century uh, AD, uh, and and. Uh, uh, the, the first institution which was called University Bologna, Italy was started in 1325. Before that, the university's name was not there. So, uh, advancement of knowledge, acquisition and advancement of knowledge is incumbent on, on all human beings and I think on all these three uh, lessons that we can derive from the life of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can be the foundation stones for all religious and social communities to join together to become moral force, not only to be of service to other human beings, but to ensure uh, a life of dignity and prosperity and worth for all of us. I hope you enjoy and I would like to take much time with us. I know this uh, number of empty chairs are more than the uh, thriller, so I think we are all waiting for the uh, program. Of, but very important things, and <coughs> we are always enlightened. And we are very thankful to the Ikhra Foundation for the most needed, timely uh, taking tasks and projects. And one time it was education, a couple of years ago. Now it's education plus action, which is not starting today. And I congratulate, and I promise myself, whatever I can do, I will be, inshallah, give my time and efforts and 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 we also should recognize the efforts. A, a 35 years history of Dr. Ifan Ahmed Khan. Uh, I saw him when he was uh, arrived to Chicago, and uh, from the very first day, we were so much impressed. And we took him as our uh, community model and a leader and a great friend. And he proved this all the time, every time and every occasion. So we pray for his health and we pray for his strength. And we appreciate and acknowledge his efforts and contribution for the community, not only the Muslim community of Chicago or the United States, its global vision for the service and unity. And time again and again, today also you have witnessed that he's always trying to unify the mashiyat e ilahi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plan to the human action. He, he also is stressed and impressed today that as individual we are nothing. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creation is for some reason and the best one best among us is the one who is the helpful for the other human beings so on that line he also told that as individual we are nothing but as a group as a unity we are definitely can make a change in this world and in the universe or in the globe and the most other important thing that he also impressed and brother Ghazi and, and Dr. Vasila Khan also impressed that the <coughs> the most <coughs> the living in this world or in this a short period of this life and and we as a Muslim we are, we are aware and we have a belief in that in this life and the life hereafter which is nothing a transition from one life and one place, one, one time to the other time, one place to the other place. It's, a, it's a just migration from one world to the other world. And, and when we are living here, we would like to leave some impression on this universe, on this cosmos, as the Einstein theory of uh, relativity is talking. It's the world is nothing, but the impression which you put on the passing of the time will very definitely remember. So as a human being, as a Muslim, we are nothing unless we try to help this global village to flourish and, and achieve something. So this is our duty today. It is not only this is this is our it's our responsibility and it's our we should have our intention today that what the Obama and the other political leaders are telling and showing to us, now we have to find out our role in this present uh, condition. We are always welcome, unless if we don't have any ideas. And when we feel that we have the zeal and vision which is given by Quran and Hakim and the seal of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as mentioned by you know, is stressed again by our uh, speaker, Vasir Lakhan. That is very important. The first constitution in the present history was written in Medina when Prophet ﷺ migrated from Mecca to Medina. And that's the constitution is still the same, the philosophy and the same rule and spirit you can see in the different constitutions of the different world. If you look at to the Constitution of the United States, we definitely, it is, as Galisa was mentioning, it is not uh, proven and published the thesis, but it is always showing some indication that the founding fathers or the faith of the founders is mostly derived from Quran al -Hatim. So when we are thinking that we have this wisdom and this knowledge and this spirit and this light, and this is incumbent on us to participate in the shaping of the new world. And inshallah, this will be maybe a very uh, modest beginning in this city of Chicago and in this very humble location. But it may be one time it will be written in the history where this vision was started and how it was spread. So I congratulate to the founders and as well as the participants to, to, to commit for this work and inshallah will make some difference in this world. The political leaders, they need some vision. They are, they are always telling that we, are, we would like to have bipartisan uh, work. They would like to see the transparency in the economy work. But nobody would like to do that. This is the fundamental concept of the Khilafah that they, they, they should be a shura among these people and as well as to the leaders. So this is the time that we should show our interest, that we can work with them, and we should show the most important and the philosophy and the methodology offered by Quran and this Sira Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Once again, I congratulate, I don't want to take to you. It's, I'm humbled, I'm honored that uh, Brother Ghazi asked me to chair this and, and give my thoughts. Thank you.